Oh, brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace to you. Welcome to this glorious Lord's Day in this Lord's house that has been prepared lovingly, carefully, and graciously for our celebration of worship today. It is a delight to see everybody, uh, familiar faces, new faces. Um, sadly, we're covered faces, but, you know. Uh, but it's great to see everybody. If you are visiting with us and are so inclined, we would love to have you sign the visitor pad at the end of your pew um, to give us a record of your being here and to help us stay in contact with you. That would be a nice thing. Um, certainly, I hope that you're prepared for a lovely time today. I think we're going to really enjoy today's worship service. And is it because I'm not preaching? Is that? <laughs> I just realized that. I'm not preaching today, so maybe that's why it's so good. Uh, no, we have our lessons and carols, obviously. Hopefully, that's not a surprise to any of you. You've all come eagerly anticipating uh, our actually being able to sing this year. <laughs> How about that? Uh, sadly, um, well, and, and you all are welcome to follow along. If you notice in the bulletin, when we get to the lessons and carols part, uh, if it's a bold type song, then that's the one that you're invited to sing along with us. Or I guess you can really sing any of them if you want. But those are the congregational hymns, of course. Um, for the hymns, yes, we're asking that you remain masked as things continue to be crazy and wonky and things. But um, I, I really believe you're going to enjoy the music today, and it'll be an uplifting thing. Some other announcements that I need to call to your attention. Um, our poinsettia list is getting longer. How about that? And you can appreciate the beauty of our poinsettia list, can't you? Not the piece of paper so much as <laughs> the flowers, right? Um, it's beautiful in here, and we appreciate all the gifts of poinsettias in memory and honor of people. You can look at the list to find out uh, more about who these individual flowers are representing. Also, uh, after worship today is our session meeting for the month. So elders, you should all be aware of that. Um, today, also, through the season of Advent, we're doing mission projects every Sunday. Today's mission project is food for faces, non-perishable food items for faces. Um, if you'd like, if you, I don't know if you brought something, if you didn't bring something, but there's a, a tree in here at the Fellowship Hall, or we're kind of leaving our gifts if you uh, have anything you want to give, or if you want to even bring something later, tomorrow, whatever. Uh, the food, or I, I don't know when we'll take it over, sometime midweek, so if you want to add some more food to it, by all means, you're welcome to bring it by. Uh, also, next Sunday is going to be a big one, too because we're having our Christmas breakfast, which we've not had for two years. And so that's at nine, we're gonna eat here, potluck, it'll be nice, we'll have a program, some more Christmas fun. And then um, that same day is also when we're taking up our joy gift offering. There's information about the joy gift offering in your bulletin, an insert for that. And at the end of the service, we're gonna have a congregational meeting. That's going to be the best of all. Well, it might be for me, since you're voting on my salary for next year. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Ed, I'm, I'm, we'll see what happens, right? He's not telling me yet. It's a surprise. I don't know what that means. Um, let's see. Where are we? One other wonderful thing I need to share with you today, too, is... Uh, I mentioned before that we had made a, uh, a change in our, our, our church staffing, right? Uh, Sally graciously is with us through the end of this month, but our new choir director, organist, church musician is behind me. She's right here. Gabriella May, she's right here, and she's going to be singing today, and you will love her. So after worship, whatever, you know, I, I'm guessing you're not going to run off too quickly. No, I think she's not going to run off too But no, greet, greet her and uh, welcome her, and she'll be starting in January. Okay? But she's excited about this, and like I said, I think you'll be pleased. Um, last thing that I think I have, we received two cards from... 
from our recent activities. One is the uh, uh, a note from Betsy Browder uh, with the luncheon and uh, Harry McKissick's service last weekend. And I just want to take a moment to read this. And, um, Dear ladies, of course, this is directly directed to the fellowship committee, and, but everybody who helped with the luncheon. Thank you so much for providing and serving the lovely lunch prior to my Uncle Harry's memorial service. What a great way to show God's love. You have a beautiful church, and back in the late 60s, while a student at Longwood, I attended worship there with Harry and Louise. Again, like I said, that was Betsy Browder. Uh, the other note here is actually from Mark, uh, Harry's son, Mark. Um, dear friends, thank you so much for being such an important part of the McKissick family family life for so long, since 1960. Many of our extended family have worshiped there in the years past and were able to be at the worship service. Many commented how it brought back good memories of years past. The flowers and Christmas decorations were beautiful. Thanks, all, thanks to all the women who provided the lunch. So many family and friends commented how great the food was. Dad would have loved to have had a couple of pieces of chocolate pie and seen such a wonderful group of friends and family there together and having such a wonderful time together. We buried Dad's remains very close to two FPC friends, Dr. Bill Coppage and Joe Ramsey. Thanks again for your kindness and friendship, love, Mark. So it was a big weekend last weekend, a meaningful time to share together. And we will continue to share meaningful times together as a family and faith. As we prepare for this worship service today, I certainly invite you also to help us with the lighting of our Advent brief. Uh, Clint, Thaxton, and Sarah Allman are going to share the lighting uh, right now. Come on up. Oh, I'm sorry. Whoa, 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 whoa. I was getting ahead of myself. I forgot we have an intro. We're going to sing for us. They were very excited, though. Sarah jumped right up. persistent security. 
Our hearts sing for joy when we hold the life and love that we share, the warmth and light of this season, and the gift of being a church family. This light is a sign of our connections as a people in Jesus Christ. With the glow of these candles before us, let us together pray the Advent prayer printed in your bulletin. O God, light of the home and the spirit of our family, we are your people because you have made us your people. Open our hearts, our minds, our spirits, our hands, and our voices to welcome your glory yet again. Make us your mirrors to reflect your splendor, to fill the space with your holy grace. Stir our spirits and speak to us of hope and joy. Then send us in love to embrace your children. In the name of the Word made flesh, we pray. Amen. of what we're doing here to the Spirit of our God. 
Let us pray. Join with me in the prayer. Faithful God, your promises stand unshaken through all generations. Renew us in hope that we may be awake and alert, watching for the glorious return of Jesus Christ, our Judge and Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever, and whom we continue in prayer. Oh, thank you, most holy one, in whom we trust and hope through these days of greater cold and darkness. You have been our rock and our fortress, our foundation and our refuge. You are the light, the eternal light of the universe and the power of community in this moment. We continue to appeal to you in your spirit to remember your children in their struggle especially those right now affected by the storms yesterday and the, the days preceding. This world is so far from your perfection. At every step we falter and even our best attempts fail to show the true heart of Jesus. Yet we do not lose hope because you are the God of love who is love and you will not leave us nor forsake us to our wayward and destructive ways. Draw our hearts into your beauty. Use this time of living in your word to rekindle in us our love for our Savior. We are most mindful of those who cannot be here to rejoice in your beauty and glory. Those who are cut off for illness or ability. We cannot be your children if we forget any of your people. Enlarge our servants' hearts and show your goodness throughout this community and the gift of your love through us. Bless the healers, the protectors, the teachers, the caretakers, and the givers as they show us more and more of your kingdom. We need your grace to fill this land and undo the hate, the fear, the ignorance, and the unwillingness to be greater. Abide in our hearts through these days of excitement and difficulty, especially remember our hurting family, your children who struggle in ways that we cannot imagine. Show us all of your goodness and faithfulness together. In the precious name of Christ, we pray the same Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> Amen, friends. And now we turn to our time of sharing and lessons and carols. Please enjoy and rejoice with us in the presence of God. Our first lesson comes from Genesis 3, verses 8 through 15. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden. And I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you are naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you have given to me to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel.
the second lesson, Genesis 22, 15, verse 18. The angel of the Lord called Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, saith the Lord, because you have done this, and I have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you, and I will make your offsprings as many as the stars of heaven, and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall close the gate of the enemies, and by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessings for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice.
lesson comes from Luke 1, 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give, him, give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be, there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her, who is said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her.
The seventh lesson, Luke 2, 8 through 20. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of angels of the holy host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven. On earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place which the Lord has made known unto us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary, she treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned home, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen it had been told to them. Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, 
Bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh.
he came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory of as a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Keep us faithful in our receiving and our giving. 
In Jesus' Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, let us pray. Most holy God, we are grateful for this time in so many ways of being able to celebrate today, this day, your day, among your people. Hold among us and between us and with us the promise of your return and give us every expectation of your good coming. Prepare us and send us and have us go forth as your people, this people, the people of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs>